Hello, today where I'm going to walk you through how we would make two different buffers in the lab. I'm not going to actually make the buffers, but I'm just going to walk through the calculations. The first one is one liter of a 0.15 molar phosphate buffer to pH of 7.4, which is very typical for any biochemical applications. And then the second one is 250 milliliters of a 0.1 molar citrate buffer at a pH of 6. To make the first buffer, we are going to need two salts of phosphate. Phosphoric acid is a triprotic acid. And today I'm just going to use the monobasic sodium salt. So that's one sodium ion and, um, and the uh, H2PO4 negative one ion. And this has a molecular weight of 119.98. And then the dibasic sodium salt, which has a molecular weight of 141.96. And then in order to figure out how much of this we need to add, which is really the goal of this calculation, we first need to use Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, where we have pH, this is our desired pH, and here is the pKa that is associated with these two forms of phosphoric acid. These are the two most common forms that are used in the lab, because pH of uh, somewhere between 6.2 and 8.2 is typical for what we would use phosphate buffer in the lab. So with a little bit of mathematical manipulation, we end up with 1.55 as our ratio of base to acid. And we would expect the ratio to be greater than 1 because the pH here is greater than the pKa. So there must be more base than acid because we know that at the pKa, the concentrations of base and acid are the same. <clears throat> so 1.55 equals B over A. Now we need to know what to put in here. And to do that, we need to set up an algebraic expression where we're going to solve for X. X being, in this case, the concentration, or the moles, rather, of acid. And since we have one liter, of a 0.15 molar solution, that means we have 0.15 moles total phosphate available to us. So that's why I put 1.15 here. We'll see in the next problem it won't be 0.15, it'll be uh, less than that because we are not making one liter of the citrate buffer, but rather a quarter of a liter. Okay. So once we solve for this, we get an x of 0 0.059 moles. And again, that's the moles of acid. In order to get the moles of base, we're just going to take 0.15 minus 0 0.059, which will give us 0 0.091 moles of base. And again, that's what we would expect. We would expect this number to be more than this because the pH is greater than the pKa. All right, now from here, it's just a simple general chemistry problem where we are going to solve for the grams of mono and dibasic salts. So moles of acid here. And I told you that the molar mass of the acid form, which is this one, is 119.98. And so that comes out to 7.08 grams of NaH2PO4. And then I'm going to do the same type of calculation for the base. Molar mass here is 141.96, and I get a total 12.92 grams of the dibasic phosphate. So basically what you would do in the lab is you would add these two together in some amount of water, less than one liter, and dissolve them, and then you would add water up to one liter and then that would give you the um, correct concentration 
as well as the correct pH. And you may need to go in and check the pH with a pH meter and adjust it with acid or base after this. But um, if you've done your measurements right, it should come out very, very close to pH 7.4. All right, so now for the second one, part B. Part B, again, is 250 milliliters of 0.1 molar citrate buffer at a pH of 6. Citrate is also a triprotic acid, <clears throat> and so it has um, three different pKa values. The pKa value that we're going to use is going to be the one closest to pH 6, and I'll show you what uh, the forms of that are going to be here in just a second. Um, but before we do that, let's calculate the number of moles that we have. So this is 0.25 liters. I'm going to multiply that times 0.1 moles in 1 liter. So I get 0 0.025 moles of citrate. Again, this is the total moles that we have to use. We can't go over this number. We need to use this to figure out what ratio of base to acid to use. And we're going to use Henders and Hasselbach just like we did with the other example. In this case, the pKa is 6.4. And this corresponds to the dibasic and tribasic citrate ions. And again, we're going to use sodium citrate for this. So it's going to be in a two and in a three um, citrate for each of these forms. And I'll show you what the molar masses are when we get to that point in the problem. We're going to do the same thing we did for the last problem, solve for the ratio of base to acid. But as you can see, we can predict already there should be more acid than base because we're below the pKa in this case. And in fact, we see that the ratio of base to acid is less than 1 at 0.398. And then we're going to solve for exactly how many moles we need based on our concentration using the same equation, solving for moles of acid. You could flip-flop this, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what x is and you um, assign it accordingly. So we do um, solve for x and we get 0 0.0179 moles of acid and then do 0 0.025 minus that number and it will be less than that at 0 0.00710 moles of base. So the acid is going to be the dibasic citrate and the base is going to be the tribasic citrate. <clears throat> and then we do the same calculation as before with molar mass. 0 0.0179 moles of acid. The dibasic citrate has a molar mass of 236.09. And again, this is sodium. Sodium dibasic and sodium tribasic. I want to be clear about that. And so the number of grams of the diabasic disodium citrate is going to be 4.23. And then for the base, the molar mass is more than that because there's one more sodium atom and one less hydrogen atom. Um, so here's our two masses, 1.423 and 1.83. We'll add these two together in some amount of water less than 250 mils, mix it up, and then dilute 
to 250 milliliters tote. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you next time.